Hi everyone, and thank you so much for taking the time to check out this raw and unedited channeling of some of the energies that we are experiencing here at the end of October. Um, I wasn't initially going to make a video about this transit that was happening, but as I looked closer at the chart and as I spoke to some other people who I have astrological discussions with, I realized that it was like really uh, important for me to make a video about this and for me to explain what is going on and sort of like understand and work through it myself as well, as I have realized that what is coming up at, during this last quarter of 2018 is really potent and important for humanity and the collective in general. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for checking out this channeling. And I'm really excited to get into some of these messages. Um, before I start though, I would like to invite everyone who is watching to come to the premiere of my Jupiter and Sagittarius video on November 8th. For those of you who haven't seen the premiere feature yet on YouTube, basically it gives a live chat section and a countdown for videos as they're about to post on YouTube. And you can come and join in and chat. I will be taking to the chat and doing live readings, um, talking about the energies, and just kind of mingling with everyone who shows up. As I just did this recently for November readings, and it was really fun. I really enjoyed uh, speaking with everyone and uh, taking to the live chat. It was a better turnout than I expected. So yes, I just wanted to say November 8th, 8 p.m. Eastern time is when the video will premiere, and I will be there an hour before at 7 p.m. Eastern time uh, to chat and uh, talk about the energies. So yes, you can just keep an eye on my channel on the community tab um, all the updates will be there and if you have notifications turned on you'll get notified like 30 minutes before the video premieres and you can come in you can also like set reminders uh, just keep an eye on the channel on that day and you'll be able to like see the chat and join in if you would like to anyway without further ado everyone I want to start talking about this incredible Halloween transit that we're having um, crazy that we are having this grand fixed cross on Halloween as a lot of you know, I'm sure Halloween is loosely based on the uh, Celtic and Gaelic tradition of Samhain. Um, it is the... And not to get too far into the minute details of Samhain, but basically its purpose was to mark the end of the harvest season and the transition into the beginning of the winter season. So it was the time where, um, you know, you would be concluding the gathering of your crops and the time where, um, like, the animals would be being slaughtered to prepare for winter. So you're, you're preparing for a barren period of time during the time of year that this transit is happening on. And I always kind of associate Grand Cross energies um, with a like recalibration or reorientation and like a new placement of energy. It's like there's um, such stark particular lines where energy can flow easily. I mean, easily isn't the right word, where it's like it clears blockages and energy flows with a Grand Cross type of energy. And um, basically, that means that energies which have been blocked for you or things which you have been putting off, things which you have been um, unable to find within yourself or in your life will suddenly become accessible, but are you ready? That That is why sometimes fixed cross energy can be so volatile in astrology is because it really opens the floodgates, which can be such a blessing in some cases, but not if you're unprepared to have that new dose of energy. You know, with like a grand trine, for example, um, the energies kind of come in more softly and subtly, and it just sort of like, you know, it, it's sort of like a Rubik's Cube, like clicking into place, and there, there's like this activity of clicking, but with a grand fixed cross, or a, a, any type of cross uh, in general, it's more of a, an immediate, it's not so much about the click, but it's about the... Um, what the click into place represents and what doors that opens in your life. So yes, a lot of new doors potentially opening during this time. And um, for it to be happening during a time of the year, which is so sacred and for many, um, many, many years has been very sacred, you know, all the way back to pre-Christ, you know, we're talking millennia of time. This time of year has been treated uh, with a lot of spiritual respect and veneration. And whenever I see that such a strong, potent configuration happens during a period of time which has such a collective consciousness attached to it, it's a really big deal. So that's why I'm here and that's why I'm talking about it. So I want to kind of explain some of the details of this chart, which should have been popping up on the screen by now. Um, so we have, as a lot of you know, to make a cross, you have to have uh, something placed within orb to each other in each sign representing one modality. So in this case, it is a fixed cross because we have something in Leo, Taurus, Aquarius, and Scorpio, all at similar degree. 
So in this chart on this day, the moon, north and south node, Uranus, Venus, and sun are what are creating the cross configuration in the sky right now. And I'm really interested in the fact that the nodes are what make this grand fixed cross real and happening. It really says to me that what is happening here and now, the things that we're facing, the uh, bigger portions of the chapter that we're going through in our life right now, are not only representative of our present, but are really recalibrating and healing, I want to say, past trauma, past life trauma, and coming into calibration and orientation with future desires, because North and South Node are all about, you know, past life or deep past, you know, whether or not you believe in past lives or not, you can really interpret it as past life or deep past in your current life. And then you have the desire and the yearning for um, what's to come, you know, what you're striving for in the current life. And, you know, you could even say future life, uh, but that there's a little bit of different opinion on that in the astrological community. But the fact that those opposite angles are involved in this cross says to me that those things are coming back together, which I think is such an incredible blessing, um, because I think one of the main things which has created a lot of distortion here and now is a separation between what your past represented to you and what you want now. I feel that many people had to um, sacrifice what they once wanted to feel a sense of belonging in their current paradigm in their current existence you had to sacrifice something and i feel that that is the beauty of this cross immediately is a reorientation and and, and again i want to say like re-clicking of the rubik's cube about how you can bring your past into alignment with what you want in the future and when you're able to do that you really save yourself so much time in um, contemplation, so much time in, you know, trying to resolve and find the solution to the current equation in your life. Like, what does this situation plus this situation equal for me? I don't have a solid foundation to stand on. The past wasn't something that was nice, so I really have to make it perfect now. And you over-obsess on the decisions that you're making now because the past is out of alignment. I really feel that something happens around this period of time, and this could happen over about two months, throughout the entire month of October, entire month of November. I feel that that this energy is percolating and then of course the climax of it is on the 31st and the 1st of November sorry 31st of October 1st of November when the cross is exact but yes we do have the moon with the node moon and Leo um, conjunct which says to me an emotional connection and understanding of your timing right now to me the nodes are so much about timing so for the moon to be conjunct there on that edge of the cross says to me that we're thinking about what we're doing with our time now we're thinking about how we want to spend our time and we're finding new energetic ways to make our time more valuable for us and more um more sympathetic to us. I feel that time has not been too sympathetic with many. So for some people it has, for some people it has, and it's been like a nice blessing throughout 2018. But if you felt that like time is on your side lately, I mean, you've done something really well. You've like really ascended a lot. Um, but this is your opportunity. If you've not felt that time has been treating you well, if you've not felt that you've had much control over time in your life and over how you're using your time, this is the time to figure that out and time to like emotionally connect with what time can be for you. I want to speak a little bit about Uranus now. Um, Uranus and Taurus retrograde at zero degrees, forming that edge of the cross. That has created, I think, a lot of confusion and readaption to the body. And it's kind of an interesting thing that I think Uranus retrograde in Taurus has been as it retrogrades on the cusp of Aries and Taurus. Um, whenever Uranus changes sign, it re, again, here's this word, recalibrates our system. You know, Uranus is very much about like the nerves in the body, the impulses, the neurological um, connection to your reality as Uranus rules like the brain and the nervous system alongside of like Leo and the sun, of course. But um it rules the higher octave of communication so that this can also be like really important communications in your life um, and also like connection to what you do. So like, you know, almost like your nerves are connected to your brain. You want to feel like connected to what you're doing in your life. Otherwise, there can't be a clear communication, you know, and things kind of start to lose control because like you need for to have a good nerve connection from like obviously from like your uh central nervous system to your arm to control your hands for example it is just the same in real life you need to have a strong connection to what you do to your job to your relationships in order to feel like you have control 
And we really treat control with something in our lives um, spiritually that is not good, that needs to be avoided. You know, you're a control freak, you have a problem with control. And yes, you can overuse this type of energy, but it's also not good to have no control in your life or to not be able to elicit a reaction um, in any way either. And th this isn't the type of control where you're controlling your job or controlling your partner. It's the type of control where you can have a connection. You know, the connection works. Um, the connection is possible. Does that make sense? So it says to me with Uranus retrograde that we're feeling a little bit out of control. We're feeling a little bit um, out of control with the way that our connections are happening, our higher octave connections in life. These aren't Mercury connections, but these are Uranus connections. You know, not just sending a text message, not just making a short trip or something like Mercury. It's like a higher vibe connection. And that's been retrograde. That's been happening not all of 2018, but um, it's been a big portion of 2018 as Taurus crossed over and I'm sorry, as Uranus crossed over into Taurus and then started to retrograde backwards. And it will be going back into Aries. I may make a specific video about the Uranus retrograde um, where I'll talk more about it, but we're going to have an opportunity there throughout like the end of 2018, beginning of 2019 to see things from the old perspective, to connect in the way that we used to and to like maybe have an easier time of it. But there'll be another test there um, as Uranus hits the cusp again of Aries and Taurus going direct. Can we adapt? Can we adapt the way our connections work in life? And can we thrive through that? Um, you will have the answer, I feel, through this period of time through this end of 2018 of how to make those connections work better. So another thing to be thinking about during October and November as we're having this cross energy is how can I make my connections in my life better? How can I heal my nervous system? How can I heal um, my wants and desires in life? You know, because again, this is connecting to past trauma. This is connecting to future desires, the nodal axis. This is connecting to how we feel about time. Can we control time? Can we connect to time? Um, all of those aspects are coming up right now. And what forms the other leg of this cross, the nice leg of this cross, Venus, Sun, in Scorpio. Um, not terribly close in orb, but for the Sun and Moon, we say in astrology that we allow a 10 degree orb, so it's still in, but it's by 7 degrees. Venus is still retrograde there as well. It's on the cusp. And that Venus-Uranus opposition retrograde on the cusp makes this not too nice. But I'm proud that the Sun is there because that sort of mitigates and helps it a little bit. Watch out for, okay, because I was just talking, remember everything that I said about connections with Uranus. This is, this is a hard message, you guys. This is a hard one to kind of get out. This one kind of hurts a little bit. Watch out for, type, for control, like mean control connections that are not healthy in relationships. So relationships that take a really dark turn, relationships that require like a masochistic edge in order to thrive, or relationships where we want to hurt ourselves to feel good. Okay, okay yeah, I'm, oh my gosh, y'all, I'm really feeling this one. This is a hard message. Um, again, unedited, so I'm not just going to go in and like take this out, but I have to kind of uh, feel that for a second and understand how that's trying to come out. What I'm feeling, and I, and I made a specific video about Venus retrograde in Scorpio, um, that'll be in the top right hand corner, but what I'm feeling that that does with the Venus opposition Uranus, um, as I'm getting a new layer on that, that I further than what I got in that video, you can really see yourself being self-destructive to your relationships, destroying your relationships in order to feel, so like causing a lot of havoc in your relationships in order to fix it. So you hurt yourself in a relationship, you hurt the other person in the relationship because you see that this person is like so good for you perhaps, that like when something bad happens, that's when you're close. When you start working on a problem, that's when, that's how you like that person, or perhaps that's how they like you is when you're fixing a problem, not when you're happy. As the rest of the relationship during this time may feel as if it's boring when things are easy, or boring, or walled off, or disconnected, connections, hello, again, Uranus retrograde in Taurus, disconnected when there's not something extremely volatile and debilitated that you're having to work through. Venus is debilitated in Scorpio, and it is retrograde. That's like a double whammy of of gross energy. Venus is just a little bit, I, I talked in my live chat on the premiere leading up to Jupiter, um, I'm sorry, November readings, um, about Venus retrograde in Scorpio and how debilitated that is and how much of an edge that is. Um, you know, especially if you have something that that's transiting. But I really, really urge you during this period of time to take relationship things as lightly as possible, to take things with a grain of salt. 
Um, also, watch out for, I'm looking where Pluto, Pluto is in Capricorn, I'm proud Pluto is not too involved in this, really a dumb note in this grand cross, thank God. Watch out, though, for paranoia relating to relationships where it's Neptune, 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 you are in Pisces at 13 degrees. Um, hmm. Well, I'm proud. I'm proud that Pluto and Neptune, you know, this kind of, that, that kind of makes this a less big of a deal, but I still feel drawn to say watch out for, um, how do I want to say it, um, succumbing to paranoia and delusion about, for instance, being cheated on. Or, for instance, like, um, thinking that the person that you're with deserves you to cheat on them, or something like that. There are weird, painful things that come up with that opposition if you're not thinking within yourself. Um, because, the again, when you listen to my videos, for example, it might sound quite obvious. It might sound like, well, duh, I wouldn't want to think those things, or I wouldn't want that situation to crop up. But these types of things, they don't just happen. It's not like you're asked, like, by the universe, okay, would you like to indulge in paranoia that you're being cheated on? And you're like, yes, I definitely want to indulge in paranoia that I'm being cheated on. These things come up in weird, roundabout, unexpected ways, and sometimes you're flung into this without even noticing that it happened and then you're there you know like whoa how did i get here how did this happen that's the whole uranus component of that it's such like a sudden like bang you know um and mars is in aquarius too mars is a little bit close by it's not in orb to the cross but it is in a fixed sign so um there's a sense of anger and temper here like on the peripheral not in this mix of this but there's like a a revenge perhaps or an anger that you're trying to channel out throughout this fixed cross energy also as a direct and specific message watch out for your vulnerability if you're not careful and if you're not being responsible with how you um give your vulnerability to others you can be taken advantage of here this is the energy of sexual assault and I just want to put that out there. I don't like saying specific things like that on my channel because I don't believe in self-fulfilling prophecies. But a Venus-Uranus opposition, both retrograde in Scorpio and Taurus, the um, axis of uh, the reproductive energy line in astrology, um, Uranus being unexpected, even like attacking, piercing energy, and then Venus obviously, you know, being a feminine passivity it's not a time to be like walking at 2 a.m. through, you know, a bad part of town if you're a female, for instance. You know, it's not a good time to be like out of your mind, drunk or something in a place that you're unfamiliar with. And it really doesn't even just um, hinge on something that is like sexual. It could also be like attacks too. Um, because we're dealing with, it's more so catharsis than it even is sexual, because like you can see that um, people just want to see others in pain right now. So that's why I'm saying it's better to be a bit of a homebody right now, <laughs> um, at least during those two days, October 31st and November 1st. If you could be a homebody, that would be great. You know, if you're already like scheduled to do certain things, be with people, you know, try to like um, not be by yourself too much. Try to be with people that you trust. I, I mean, I do feel that you're protected too if you like found yourself in a situation there. The only time that this type of devastation would occur would be with a with would be through utilizing a sense of recklessness or needing to feel reckless. Like, yes, I want to go walking through that dark alleyway at three o'clock in the morning because um it's like an adrenaline rush. Because Uranus and, and especially with the Mars on the peripheral, it's like a sense of adrenaline and recklessness. So yes, do think about that. Do consider that. Let's talk a little bit about the positive mundane messages of this cross because there are quite a few of them. Um, Sun conjunct Venus with that incredible Uranus moon node energy, an incredible time to redefine your business, an incredible time to completely transform your financial presence in life and to like transform your bank account. Uh, Sun and Venus together, even though Venus is retrograde and opposite Uranus, that could still be utilized for... Um, making a stark change to your financial system in a positive way. A good time to do something like that. Also, an incredible time to gain energy. As I was saying at the beginning of the reading, is that um, if you've been really dealing with fatigue or a health problem that's like lingering, this type of configuration opens 
the like chakral system. It opens your body up to receive divine healing and divine energy. But I would definitely sit with the energy, you know, if you're if you're affirming that or if you're trying to do that, really um, set some ba- some boundaries and structures into place because this is so powerful that you can also be a little bit over energized by this as well. Um, so really, th- uh, being a bit conditional. Use, utilizing a bit of conditional magic with this type of thing, I almost want to say, where um, you are saying, okay, I need energy in this in, in blank way. I need blank to heal for me, and I, I only want it to be healed in a way that is um, positive for my growth as a person. You know, really setting out some boundaries about what your healing is and affirming that is an incredible, incredible way to utilize this energy. Um, perhaps even the best thing to do is to just plan out for these days, October 31st and November 1st, to do quite mundane, unimportant things, you know, not being all over the place. You know, I'm sure some of you are working, I'm posting this video pretty close to the date, so it's not like you can necessarily change your plans, but I'm sure that there are plenty of you that are extremely busy and doing a lot of things, and that's okay. But how can you make it a bit more mundane? How can you take things slowly? How can you pace yourself? Whenever Uranus, Mars, Venus, Sun, nodes together like that, the best thing to do is to slow down, to breathe, and to do something maybe even a little bit boring, you know? Um, and how can you make something boring a little bit more fun and exciting? Because Uranus will demand a bit of excitement and a bit of um, a bit of unkemptness and even a bit of recklessness, but I would avoid it if you have the opportunity, okay? Um, and to not take too big risks, too big chances, too big of... Um, paranoia is anything that deals with risks, gambling, chances, that feels like a, being reckless, I would avoid as much as you possibly can. Um, and that is my uh, advice for you all. Again, remember that the positive side of this transit is just an incredible ability for healing very quickly there and for um, setting onto a path that creates healing and abundance for you. I hope this video has been helpful in guiding you on your path do not be fearful with this energy and again just watch out watch out for fear regret and recklessness those things will um have a potential to create a bit of problem and just be happy be boring if you can be a bit carefree um but carefree and careful at the same time balancing that and you will like do really wonderful with this energy um anyway everyone yes if you get the opportunity to come and check out my premiere on november the 8th at 7 p.m eastern time i will be taking to the live chat talking about the energies um doing uh readings on the spot for certain people and you might have the opportunity to get read if you come and check that out. Again, you can stay tuned to the description box below. I'll like update what the schedule is looking like for that. And also the community tab on my YouTube channel uh, will have all of that like listed out. So, and again, like subscribe with notifications. Like if you do that, you don't even have to pay any, pay any attention to the other stuff because um, it will send like a notification to your phone like when the premiere starts. Um, and again, you just have to like hit the bell button next to the subscribe button to do that. Um, thank you guys so much for being here and your likes and comments and shares mean the world to me as well as your subscriptions, obviously. Um, yes, also you can click the center of your screen to check out November readings. They are already up. And um, again, description box below to find me on social media, book a reading, or to like um, even send me a virtual coffee. I am on Kofi, and um, it certainly took a lot of coffee to get this out because this was on the spot. And yeah. Um, but anyway, thank you all so much for checking this video out. We will be talking soon. See you at my premiere, hopefully on November 8th. Jupiter's going into Sag. So wonderful, so optimistic, so beautiful. We will all be shining and having new opportunities to heal throughout the end of the year. Talk soon. Be excited for Jupiter and Sag. Bye.